What's up legends? Welcome back to another video and we are going to be talking about this beast today. So you may have seen recently that I was filming with a performante spider. That's a video I'm going to link it somewhere. But I'm super intrigued uh, by this car because it could be one of the best supercars that you can go get as your kind of first supercar, if ever that's something you guys are considering. And I get asked a lot, like, listen, I've been working for years. Finally, I've been able to consider getting a supercar. What do you recommend? And I think this is a strong contender. LP5. 80-2, it's the rear wheel drive version of the Lamborghini Huracan. Been driving around in it for a little while. We are in Spa and we're actually at D2P, surrounded by Ferraris, ironically. So look at where we are right now. There are all of these Ferrari race cars. Uh, if you didn't see my last video, I actually went out and drove a 488 Challenge with these guys and we just came to see their headquarters and it's pretty impressive. You've got four five eights, for 88s, these are all challenge cars. This one's actually painted in a beautiful non-metallic blue. But this is something pretty special. We'll get back to the Lambo, but I just thought I could not show you this. This is over a million euros worth of 488 GT Modificata. This is basically a no limits Ferrari race car. So they looked at their challenge. Uh, so 488 Challenge, 488 Challenge Evo, then there's the GT3 and the GTE, which are the cars that will compete in Le Mans. And if they had no regulations, um, no limitations, what would be the ultimate 488 platform race car they could build? And it would be this, the Modificata. So they made this, only 25 in the world, and it's got around 700 horsepower, I believe, around 1,100 kilos. It is an absolute beast. And you can see the differences. I mean, look how much wider the arches are compared to a Challenge. Um, and then everything's, I mean, been changed. It's steel brakes rather than carbon ceramics. It's got carbon all over the place and anyways really impressive beast and I thought I would start the video here and give you a tour of the outside of this car which was lent to us by a local um, supercar rental company I'll put their Instagram on the screen right now and also all the links down below if you too want to have a go in this car if you're in the area it is wrapped I don't know if you can see but maybe better in the sun right here in this kind of chameleon color wrap which will go from dark green to purple, it's a really nice wrap. They've done pretty well on this, and it's got this aftermarket wing. So the standard 580 does not come with this wing. It's also got a really nice option of the forged carbon. Now the easiest way to tell that it's a 580 and not a 610 four-wheel drive is this front grille, which will come out here and has a little bit of a different kind of entrance to the front radiators and that's how you can tell that it is a 580. Now these things are brilliant, they're a lot more fun to drive I think than the four-wheel drive versions. I'll just give you a quick walk around the spec, so as you can tell it's got the uh, kind of uh, standard wheels that we see on most of the Hurricanes and the red calipers. It is white underneath and inside Loads of Alcantara and red stitching. The interiors of these Hurricanes are brilliant. So if you're looking at getting into your first supercar, you're looking for it to be, obviously have the look from the outside, which this definitely does. The name, Lamborghini. Uh, the noise, this is a V10 naturally aspirated engine, um, but also be somewhat usable and comfortable. So not too hardcore, you know, you don't want to get straight into something like a Scud, a Speciale, a Performante, something like that. And the prices of these have come down quite a bit. So they're at fairly interesting prices and people have, because they're usable, put a fair amount of mileage on them, which means there are some good deals out there. Now the interior of this kind of ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? So really usable, you've got the latest technology so you can connect your Bluetooth easily, digital dash, and it has that wow factor, which for example an Audi R8, which is another popular first supercar, doesn't necessarily have. They're obviously very close to one another um, in terms of platform, chassis, gearbox, engine, basically all the same, but this adds that wow factor. And the price difference now isn't so much that you shouldn't consider these as well. Now, the one downside of this is practicality. So that's why these seats are so far forward. We actually struggled so much to get these bags in here. Here's a clip. Première mission, c'est les valises. Derrière le siège.
une valise là et deux valises derrière les sièges. Uh, that is why you can now see Emrik holding a camera next to me because we have no more space for the GoPros. A bag behind me and Emrik's knee is basically in his forehead. So it's not the most convenient car in the world, not gonna lie. But it is one of the modern cars with the most character and I said this when I was driving the Perth last time. Listen to this. I mean, what a sound. Naturally aspirated V10. And this is why I think this car offers such an interesting package. I mean, obviously, it's the very, very high end of if you're considering a first supercar. Coming in with a Lamborghini is pretty extreme. However, what are your options? You've got Audi R8, which is based on a similar platform to this, but I think the R8 lacks where this car over delivers. So the R8 has an interior which is similar to in other cars and it just lacks that extra character. Whereas these now have come down quite a bit on the market, uh, at least in the in the European, maybe not in the British, but in the European market, where they're at fairly interesting prices and compared to Audi R8 V10 Pluses, the new ones, there isn't that massive of a difference. Whereas in what it delivers, I think it's, um, yeah, there's a big difference in terms of what you get for your money in this because first of all it's a Lamborghini and second of all all the little details like down here you see with the start button you know that or the details of these buttons you feel like you're in a fighter jet the steering wheel you know you've got these big solid paddles everything feels quality you feel like you're really in a proper thoroughbred supercar so you've got obviously the character of the naturally aspirated V10 and it's becoming more and more rare that you can have all of the latest technology. So the only thing this is lacking is Apple CarPlay, but you can retrofit that. But you have, you know, Bluetooth connection, digital dash, where you can flick through different modes. Um, you have double clutch gearbox. All of these things which actually add a real, all of these things which make the car really, really pleasant to drive on a daily basis because you're not lacking in any of the latest technology, but, you still got this. 580 horsepower. Woo <laughs> and an engine that screams. So now often what you'll have is you'll get all the latest technology, all of these things, but you're gonna have, you know, a hybrid powertrain, you're gonna have the turbos. You're not gonna have that, right? There aren't that many cars which will do it. So, as a first supercar, we're living in a time where we don't know how much longer this is going to last. And that's why this ticks basically all the boxes. It's got the name, it's got the character, it's got the usability. And now, thanks obviously to the Audi and the Lamborghini partnership which has been going on for a while, it's got the fit and finish as well. Now, granted, the running costs are going to be quite a lot higher on this than on an R8 or on, say, a 911. So that is a negative point and the consumption of the V10, if you're blasting it, is pretty crappy. <laughs> but if you're on the motorway and you pop it into auto and strada, it will switch off some of those cylinders and you'll actually get pretty decent miles per gallon. So you know, I'm not saying it's the most economical car, but it's not as bad as you would maybe think. You have three different driving modes, obviously, with this, like in all Hurricanes. You have Strada, Sport, and Corsa. Those you can go through on the steering wheel right here. You can flick through all of the different menus. And a few of the things which this has, which adds to that supercar kind of character, are, for example, like in Ferraris and like in Lamborghinis these days, and more and more supercars, you've got you know, your indicators, your light buttons, all these things on the steering wheel, which makes it so different to your average kind of car. Whereas in something like an R8, it is a bit more standard, like you would find in a TT and, and things like that. So this, you know, if you're taking it out on the weekend, you kind of need to get used to how it works a little bit more. You know, all these particular buttons, you're flicking through the digital dash through the buttons here. You've got the buttons on the steering wheel as well to do your indicators, to do your lights. It's very easy to drive, but you kind of need to get to know it a little bit. And uh, yeah, I just find that to add a bit more character as well. It's fairly comfortable, so these seats, these are the comfort seats, are really nice and comfy. The sport seats are beautiful, but pretty terrible to sit in. 
So you can, you know, go on road trips, go to rallies, do all those sorts of things with this car. And the more and more I was reading through my comments, I was just getting asked this question, you know, I'm finally in a position to get my first car. What is, you know, what would you recommend? And to be honest, driving this around, I was like, this is such a complete package, specifically the two wheel drive car, because it, again, the four wheel drive is great and arguably more usable and maybe better if it is your first supercar. But I personally love the character of this. A bit less power, I mean, not much, only 30 horsepower less. But still, I mean, 580 horsepower, you're still rock and rolling, you're loving life in this. But it's a little less predictable and a little more fun and it just puts, you know, a bit more of a smile on your face where it wants to kind of have fun, it wants to play around with you more than, say, the four-wheel drive car. And that's why I think that if you're gonna come in and get one of these and you want a character, this ticks that extra box that the four-wheel drive maybe potentially doesn't. I know that Emric, who sat next to me, has, um, you know, this was one of the first supercars he drove. He was saying, this really is everything I was expecting from a supercar. So, you know, the super quick gearbox, if you put it in course, it hits you in the back of the head. The sound of the engine, um, you're sat low down, the visibility is not terrible, but you feel like you're in a supercar. The front windscreen is so slanted in front of you, you just see the road passing right underneath you. You're so low compared to the other cars. You see that Lamborghini logo in front of you. I mean, it's great. And the more and more I drive these Hurricanes, I, I understand why it's also, for example, the guys who lend us this car are from the supercar rental company. This is one of the most popular cars that they'll rent because it ticks all those boxes. So, all that to say that if you're looking for a first supercar and you've got a pretty healthy budget, this is, I think, one of the most interesting cars on offer. I mean, there's the 458, there's the second hand 480, but those are still more expensive. There is the R8, which is at a more interesting price, where you're gonna have to let go a lot of those supercar characteristics that this has. You're gonna have to let go of those if you get into an R8. So, yeah, I think in terms of offering a complete package at a price which is getting more and more interesting, this is pretty much as good as it gets. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you think that this is one of the most interesting packages or what else you think could be a good option. But in the meantime, huge thank you to Turismo Rent Cars. It's been awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And also, if you want to see another video from our time here in Spa, racing those 488 challenges, which you saw at the beginning of this video, around the track, that link is going to be down below because that was such an epic day. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see you very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.